So I wanted to talk about the narration of the Kingdom Hearts 4 trailer. I know a lot of people are bringing it up. A lot of people find it important because, of course, everybody wants to know every little detail about the trailer. So I just wanted to kind of give my thoughts on who I think it is and why I think it's this individual. Um, so in my initial video, I said Yazora, and I gave Yazora for the fact that I couldn't see it being anyone else who understands the rules of quadratum of the world of unreality. Um, of course, we got Strelitzia here, and who knows? Who knows? Strelitzia is either the real person, or she could just be a projection. Uh, I remember back when I was making content and putting out a lot of content, a lot of people kept on bringing up the idea, and I don't know if this is the, like a lot of people just having this thought, or you know, is there another content creator or a theorizer for the cage community that came up with this idea? But I like it. And it's the one that Strelitzia may actually be working with uh, Lushu and also the Master of Masters. That's better. Lushu and also the Master of Masters. Um, again, I like the idea, but I'm more so of the opinion that the Master of Masters and the Foretellers were not in unreality. They were just simply dead or they were just simply gone for that time after they had been trapped in the data world the data scape remember lucio speaks to the darkness that sees him send off Strelitzia. he speaks to that darkness as if they have some form of camaraderie he even says and understands without being told that th the darkness that he's speaking to has seen the book of prophecies when he tells the book of prop when he tells the book of prophecy when he tells this darkness that of course they didn't take a f they didn't take in everything from the book of prophecies they just basically did like a skim through it and this sounds more so like as if it would be someone like potentially Ava uh Chirithi did detail her as prudent but I think that it is Ava that's the darkness that made it out of the datascape the one that followed Maleficent out of the datascape but when it comes to the actual narrator at hand my first option is Yazora, and I think it's Yazora because I believe that uh, the Foss's Rex cutscene didn't give us enough of his voice to actually say, okay, you know, it's not Yazora. I don't think it did. I mean, if you listen to the two voices, they sound kind of similar to the ear. They sound kind of similar, but of course that doesn't mean it absolutely has to be Yazora. So then who else could it be? My thought is potentially, now I've seen Xehanort thrown around, but specifically young Xehanort. I don't hold that belief. I don't think it's young Xehanort. If we're going to see another Xehanort, I think it will be prime Xehanort that we'll see. And this is why he still sounds like young Xehanort. We'll see Xehanort around the time of when he looks like potentially Xemnas or just a little bit right before Remember, there was a time period where Xehanort was considered to be the strongest Keyblade wielder of all time since, I'm guessing, the New Age. He was considered at one point to be the strongest Keyblade wielder of all time. I mean, that comes with a lot of expectations when it comes to Prime Xehanort. And why has Nomura established that Prime Xehanort was the strongest Keyblade wielder, the most gifted Keyblade wielder, of all time in the new age if he isn't going to ever appear i mean yeah that does leave a bit of lore as to how xehanort potent well it is lore as to how xehanort got to you know this point or got to that point in his fruition um and his machinations how he got there you know that explains that because nobody technically could stop him but i mean at the same time too why establish that and not show it? I mean, we've seen everything else that the series has had on the underlying lore bits. We've, we're starting to see all of that stuff. So I wouldn't expect for Prime Xehanort to never show up. But the way he shows up, I think, would be interesting. Because my thoughts is, if this should so indeed be Prime Xehanort, I think the way that he's showing up is actually within the subconscious of Sora. So, everybody keeps on talking about how Sora looks different for Final Fantasy, right? Well, what if they went the Final Fantasy route and went the whole FF7R route? And, of course, Master Xehanort 
is connected to Sora via the X-Blade due to the fact that it's made so much of his essence. And of course, obviously, with him being made up of the X, I mean, with him being in Sora's subconscious due to the X-Blade, then I'd assume he'd more than likely be appearing in his prime form. This could be why we see Sora utilize the powers of the Chi Blade so early on. If we can assume that, you know, he fights, the, he will fight the dark side at the beginning of the game, like how we've seen in the rest of the series. Um, but, I mean, that does make it interesting as to how, uh, of course, the whole situation with picking, you know, do you want to be magic based, balance, or more so physical attack based? I think that will make for an interesting dynamic as to how that becomes possible. So, I mean, I mean, how that's done, how that will be handled for Kingdom Hearts 4. So, that's my thoughts on who the narrator is. I gave Yazora initially, and I do still believe that Yazora is a good opportunity. I say my, my percentages on who I think it's going to be overall... I say 25% Prime Xehanort and 75% Yuzora. I don't think Foss's Rex, the cutscene where Yuzora appears, gave us enough of his voice to actually say. And if you go back and listen to the cutscene in Japanese, it does kind of sound close. I know there's going to be that one motherfucker that be like, no, they don't. And it's like, okay, bro, but I mean, that that's your opinion. To me, I mean, I think they sound pretty close and... I've been re-watching and overlooking those cutscenes for like the past two years over and over and over again to be able to come out with the content that I come out with, to be able to have the best understanding possible. And to me, the two voices sound very similar. Now, I've also heard people say, Lucio and the Master of Masters. Uh, as possibilities, they, they aren't out as possibilities, but I mean... I don't even have like anywhere that they fit in my like 100% range, you know, who I believe it is. I don't even have any placements for them when it comes to like any real number I can give for them to specifically, because I don't believe, man, they will be telling Sora anything about not being able to make it out of unreality. I don't think the Master of Masters has this deep understanding of unreality. I mean, besides the fact that the no name, the real one is technically traveling around with Sora in the form of the X-Blade. But I, I don't know, man. I don't <laughs> I don't know, man. I mean, we'll we'll just have to wait and see. But when it comes to what I believe is going on, like with this voice uh, actor situation, the one that's speaking, I do believe that it is indeed either Yazora or Prime Xehanort. And I believe in Xehanort's case, if it is him, he will be showing up inside Sora's subconscious. They're going to go the full Final Fantasy route here. And he'll be showing up in his subconscious. And one more thing. I also saw about Star Wars being in Kingdom Hearts. And it's funny because I remember I had made a video when that Star Wars game had came out. That latest one. Uh, the ones where you get to be uh, a Jedi and stuff. And you get to play and travel. And it's a single player game. You know which one I'm talking about. I made a video to where, you know, you fight one of the... In I think one of the Inquisitors. And, you know, you, you fight the Inquisitor and... I mean, it, it really did feel like a Kingdom Hearts fight. I mean, yeah, it didn't have the same structure to it to where, like, you know, you have that full range of motion, but it really did feel like a Kingdom Hearts fight. It felt like, you know, something that would be akin to how you would see a fight from someone that wields a lightsaber within Kingdom Hearts. But at the same time, too, you know, what's more important is that we'll be heading the indoor, which means we're going to be jumping potentially right to the end of the Star Wars original saga, of the Star Wars original saga, and if we are doing that, then that's an indication right there that unreality will only take place in one Kingdom Hearts game. It will just be this one Kingdom Hearts game where unreality will be as prevalent as it is. Of course, we are in the Lost Master arc. I initially took it as Lost Masters, but it's actually Lost Master arc. Someone had to point that out to me, so shout out to you. You know who you are. Um, someone had to point that out to me, you know, it's talking about one individual master in actuality when it comes to the title of this arc. So the lost master, I think would be indicative of the fact that the seven guardians are looking for Sora. And of course the foretellers will more than likely be trying to track down Ava. And if my estimations are right, Ava potentially has been reborn into Kairi. 
potentially, or she's that darkness and she's connecting herself to different people. And we know that, of course, when she connects herself to different people, there's the possibility that she's potentially, you know, crafting their thoughts and, you know, their actions through that ability. So we'll probably see later on. But again, as far as this video is concerned, I'm going to leave it off with where I left you, where I'm leaving you guys. You know, I think it's Yazora pre predominantly. And then on the second hand, I think it's going to be Prime Xehanort, who's within the subconscious of Sora, who understands this world and is able to tell him certain stuff. I mean, he could have this. Un Remember, Yense said that Xehanort has this understanding of his understanding of unreality, potentially from his time as Galaya Kylum. When it could be that Time Portal Xehanort actually, Time Portal Xehanort actually knows that, you know, a version of him will eventually be with inside Sora's subconscious. And due to that fact, of course, Master Xehanort knows that he can travel into his different forms. Remember, his soul, not his heart, but his soul was able to infect and take control over young Xehanort in Dream Drop Distance. That's how Tessie Nomura explained it that his soul basically hopped into young Xehanort. So if that's the case, then I could assume that, of course, potentially his soul is possibly in this Keyblade. You know, it's possibly within Sora's subconscious. It's connected to him, and potentially it can give him certain bits of information. But I don't think that it'll just be like young Xehanort will appear again because, I mean, he already went home, and I mean... The send-off for Xehanort actually reverted him back to the last time he was good. It kind of took that sort of... It kind of took that sort of Star Wars... Um, damn, we should have known about Star Wars then. Because, bro, that was like the biggest hint that Star Wars was coming in. Uh, when it took that sort of force um, interpretation of the afterlife to where Xehanort was actually reverted back to the last time he was good, the last time he was pure. And that was when he was actually best friends with Ericus in their youth. It reverted him back to that form potentially, you know, to show that his soul had been cleansed. The same thing happened to Ericus, who admittedly, meaning he himself, agrees with the sentiment that he was a failure. You know, he had sins you know the bbs trio was basically in the position that they were in because of the sins of the father ericus and thus of course he reverted back to a childlike state as well so thank you guys for tuning in to this video let me know your thoughts on who you think the narrator is i know it's being made a big deal in the community on which character is actually narrating but tessie nomura did say we have known of this character for a long time well we've known of yazora for two years well actually three years now because Kingdom Hearts 3 was January 2019, so we've known of Yazora for three years now. So I don't think that that eliminates Yazora from the list of possibilities. In fact, I think it makes it more stronger because Nomura does speak in tongues. You've known of this character for a long time could literally mean that we've known of them for three years when it comes from Tessie Nomura. It also could mean Xehanort. But those are the two voices that I think are very close. Now, am I saying young Xehanort and... Um, Yuzora sound close? Uh, I mean, possibly, but I mean, if it is Xehanort, I would think I would think it's Prime Xehanort. So thank you guys. Don't forget to do a little A class game and everything you do. Don't forget to keep it A class, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace the heck out.